This morning, you know, obviously it's Christmas Eve. We're going to speak about the birth of Jesus and, and, and the blessing that that is to us. That's, that's a gift. That is a gift. And you know, through Christmas season, for the last four weeks, all you've been hearing is, is the word gift. Gift, gift, gift. You know, Christmas is around the corner. You hear gift, gift, gift. But we tend to forget what the real gift is. We think gifts are just presents. You think gifts uh, are just something you give to somebody. But God, the Father in heaven, has given you and I the ultimate gift, and that is his son, Jesus Christ, that one day we can go to heaven through him and be happy forever. This morning, my text is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. And I'm really just wanting to focus on one line in that as my main uh, part of the sermon, but we have to go through it um, step by step. The first thing you're going to see is who God chose to bring his son into this world. God do not just choose each and every person or every anybody to do something big. You have to to be living a certain way before he can trust you to give birth to something. This girl, she wasn't a woman, this girl was a young person. There's a lot of young people in the congregation today. I want you to understand that if you live a life pleasing to God, there is nothing he can't do through you. I want you to take that into the new year. We saw the young people up here. If you dedicate your life to God and you live a clean life, God is willing to use you to do big and miraculous things. Get encouraged with that. Take that as, a, as an example. The Bible gives us examples. The Bible, sh God shows us how he can use a young person like Mary, but then he can take somebody like Hannah. There's no age limit with God. You can be in your teens you can be in your 30s. You can be in your 50s. God has a time in, in your life that he can use you once your life is a pleasing to him. So be encouraged with that. Not just the young ones, the old ones too, Pastor Mark. <laughs> After that, okay, we're just going to go step by step. After that, we all know the story. After Jesus was born, they left and they went to... Where did they go? Bethlehem. And she was about to give birth, and there was no room in the inn, like the joke pastor was saying. So they had to give birth at the side in a little trough. Okay? Keep this in mind. The king of kings is coming, and they didn't have room for him, only because they didn't know who he was. If they had known who Jesus was, they would have made room for him. I want you to remember that. We're going to come back to that part. My text is from Luke. My topic this morning is, if you don't make room, you are doomed. If you don't make room for God in your life, you're heading for a wrong place. God has sent his son Jesus into this world to give you and I a chance, to give us an opportunity. The place that you and I right now are in, we need to watch and see, are we making room for God in our life? Or is it too crowded to let him in? Is it too crowded with certain friendships we have? Is it too crowded with a certain lifestyle we're living in? Is it too crowded that we cannot let him in? What is it that you don't have room for in your life? What is it that is causing you from not coming to church on a regular basis? What is it, a crowd in it that you don't pray? Only when there's a situation, you find time to pray. What is crowding your judgment to have God into your life? That is the reason for this passage. There was no room in the inn. How could you not make room for God in your life? 
How could you don't have room for the Savior? If you don't make room for him in your life here, he cannot make room for you up there. If there's things in your life that you know are holding God from coming into your life, we got to let it go. Things are crowded. You know why? Because there's mess packed up in there. And to get rid of mess, you got to start throwing out some things. And to make room, you have to start throwing out some things. As Christians, we need to start throwing out some things in our Christian life to make room for God to come in so that we may grow. You know what it is. If anger is an issue in your life, we need to make room and get that out of it. If adultery is a room in your life, is taking up room in your life, you need to let that go and get rid of it. Whatever sin is in our lives right now, it's holding us back from having God to come in and fill that spot. And unless we get rid of certain things, he's not going to come in and fill that spot. And it's up to you and I to make room for God. Make room for that gift. That is the greatest gift that we can get is Jesus Christ. How do you make room? You read. The Bible says he is a word. That's a gift right there. That book you're holding in your hand is a gift. It has the answer on how to make room. It has the answer on how to live a better life. It has the answer on what you need to do to make it up there. It has the answer how to uncluster those things in your life. Those things are just packed in boxes after boxes that don't need to be there. That's sitting in your life and attracting roaches in your life and attracting mice in your life and attracting dust in your life. You need to clean it out. You need to make room for the Savior. And that's the main point of this. That's why I'm saying it over and over. That is what I want to express to you today, guys, is making room for God. Because if we don't make room for him, he will not make room for you. We make room for God by giving him our time. All right. We make room for God by giving him our tithes. You make room for God by giving people your love. You make room in your life for God by blessing others, by forgiving others. That is how you get God to come into your life. That is how God wants to be a part of your life. Enough with the rubbish that we have. Enough with the hatred. They don't have room for God anywhere. They don't have room for God these days in the, in, in the schools. There's no room for God in schools. There's no room for God in, at your job. You can't say the word Jesus at your job. You can't even say Merry Christmas. They reply with you with Happy Holidays. You got to make room for God in your marriage. You got to make room for God in your family. Not just when you see each other, but you got to get together. You got to get that family back, that praying time, that bonding with your family. Bring back that. Fill your life with God. Make room for him in your life. Not unnecessary stuff. Our life these days are so busy with work and so busy with families and so busy with careers and busy with this and busy with that that there is no room for us to come to church on a Sunday. There's no room for us to be part of the Bible study because we are too clustered and too busy with other things that has taken up the space in your life that needed to be given to God, but we give it to somebody else or some other thing or anything but God. Make room. And only you know your house, your life, your temple. Only you know what you need to clean out. I can't tell you. I can throw out some illustrations and make some examples. But you got to figure it out. When you leave here today, I want you to understand. I want you to make notes. What is it in my life that I am using that has taken up a space where God should be? And you know what convicted me this week? Facebook. I'm trying. I ain't lying to you. I promise I'm not lying. Facebook. You get, I open up Facebook. 
you see one reel. 35 minutes later, I'm like, wow. A little kid in Africa just built a pool in the jungle. Yes, you're like, what the heck? And then you go to pray. This is what got me. I went to pray before I went to sleep. And in 10 minutes, I was like, all right. And I said, get back down on your knees. Because we make room for so many things. We can go sit in a movie theater and watch a movie after movie after movie and be comfortable. We come to church, and if the sermon goes five minutes too long, we're fed up. You don't have my attention no more. Because why? We're occupied with different things in our lives. That is not important to us. We leave little room and just want to push it at the side. Hey, Jesus, we don't have room for you in the inn, but there's a little cow pen right here. You, if you want to stay there, stay there. And that's how we treat God in our lives. We use up our lives on our time, and when we have a little extra, a little something, hey, 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 God, hey, I'll step in on Easter Sunday. We got to do better in making room for God. I understand this is a Christmas uh, Eve service, and I'm supposed to be telling you about the birth of God, but I'm trying to tell you, you can know all about the birth of God, but if you're not doing what it's called to do as a Christian, just knowing the birth of God is not going to help you. Amen. Christmas is not about a tree and presents. He came for a reason. He came for you and I. Let not just push that aside. Let us not take that for granted. What it is in your life that is holding and taking up space in your Christian walk with God, in your in. This is your in. What is there that you can throw away? What is there that you should not have invited it in the first place to be in there? There are certain lifestyles we have. We should have not entertained it in the beginning, and now it's a part of our life that has taken up a big space where God should have been. It has taken up rent in your life where God should have been. This year, 2024, as we go into the new year, let us start doing some spiritual house cleaning. Some sweeping, some sweep some stuff out. Open up the windows, let, let, the, let the funk get out. Because this is the second part of it now. He, there was no room for the, in the inn for the king, but there's room for you and I in heaven. Amen. They made no room for the king, but he made room for you. If your life is pleasing to God, if your life is pleasing to God, if you live a holy life, he has made a place for you that you can't even imagine. It is not an inn. It is not a stable. He said, you don't even understand what I went to go prepare for you. What my father has for you in heaven. You don't understand what I have going to do. Your eyes cannot see it. You can't imagine it. This is where I have a place for you if you make a place for me. That's what he's saying. If you do this, I am going to do that. And you can't get that without doing this. Understand that each and every one of us need to do a spiritual cleaning. We need to take away things from our lives that are taking up space, again, where God should be. It could be something simple. Like I told you, that, that Facebook thing convicted me. Because I went and prayed for five minutes and I was on Facebook for 30 minutes watching nonsense. There was no need for that. I'm not saying Facebook is wrong. Go do that. But, but, but watch Facebook for five minutes and pray for 30 minutes. And that's so hard for some of us to do. It's easy to watch that thing for 30 minutes. But you run out of things to thank God for in three minutes. Thank him that you have eyes that you can read Facebook. Start thinking of ways to extend your prayer life. To just thank him for every little thing. 
Because I'm sure if he starts taking things away and you start missing one by one by one, then you'll notice it. Make room for him in your life. Start doing the things that you know you should do and stop bringing in things in our lives that we know that don't need to be there. It is not a storage for trash. It is a temple for the Holy Spirit to abide in. And when you bring something in, bring something in clean. Bring the forgiveness in. Bring the love in. Bring the patience in. Bring the kindness in. Be an encourager. Stop the gossiping. Stop the lying. If someone tells you something, you don't need to add a little something to it. And then go tell your story because it sounds better to you. Stop it. You don't need that in your life. Places that you go that your co-workers invited you for that you shouldn't have been to, don't go. Stop it. Because you can't invite them to church. They won't come here. Why are you going with them? When you start to clean out certain things in your life, you're going to see different areas of your life. You're going to notice things. Well, hey, this part of my life, this is clean. No, let me work on this part. I'm not just going to clean out the closet. I got an extra room here. I need to clean that out. That one's bigger and has more junk in it. Once you start seeing cleansiness in your life, you're going to notice where else is dirty. And then you're going to start cleaning that. And then you're going to see you're going to have an open vessel for the almighty God to come in and dwell in you. Who's ready for a spiritual cleaning? I'll challenge you today to pray about it. Pinpoint those places in your life that you need to flush things out of. There is mess in our lives that don't need to be there and has been there all through 2023. Let's not take it into 2024. Because there's a better reward waiting for you. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we thank you for sending your son to us, O oh Lord. That we can have a chance to live in heaven with you. We, send, we thank you for that gift that you have given us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, that you sent the all-powerful, mighty God for people like us. Because you love us. Lord, I pray, O oh God, for whatever it is that we need to take away from our lives to make more room for you today. That we, you give us a clear picture on what it is, O oh God. Whatever it is. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's smoking. Whatever it is, maybe we're not spending enough time with our spouse and we're neglecting our family. Whatever it is, maybe, oh Lord, that we, we're just straying from you and we're not in church as much as we used to. And different things are starting to cluster up in our lives now, oh Lord. Help me to get back to where I used to be. Help me to get back to clean living, oh Lord. I rededicate my life to you this morning. I'm going to make room for you today, oh Lord. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to clean up. Because you got to clean up before he shows up. He's a clean God. He don't like to live in dirty places. He's holy. He is mighty. He's everlasting. He is the king of kings. Imagine this, a king. That is who you were making room for. You're not making room for a slave who can live anywhere. You're not making room for a dog who can sleep on the floor. You're making room for the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the almighty God. That is who you're making room for. So nothing should be too hard for you to get rid of to make room for God.